Well, uh, Mr. President, dear uh, faculty, first of all, thank you for having me here. It's an honor. And um, it all began a few days ago when you were in Doha and we had a meeting and you asked me and you invited me kindly to come to Georgetown. And it was an honor. But I didn't realize that I'm going to be facing and in front of me students and faculty. So, you know, it's, uh, it's not easy. So I need your help, you know, if there are any, any, any questions. But really, it's an honor for me. I'm, I'm very happy to be here. Let me just begin by saying, you know, congratulations to all of us that Georgetown has been in Doha now for 10 years. We all know how important this prestigious uh, university being in the, in the region in the Middle East. But we realize how, much, how important it is when we see our students graduating from there and trying and playing a bigger role in, in my country and also in the region. I'm sure uh, some of the students here, we're gonna see them having uh, high positions in either in this country or back in their country. So I think, as you said, Mr. President, I've been Emir now since 2013. Our region isn't stable. We have um, a lot of uh, problems happening uh, around us. Thanks to God that Qatar and the Gulf region is a stable, uh, are sta is stable countries. It doesn't mean that we, uh, you know, we should sit back and be relaxed. We have to do lots of works, lots of reforms, and to uh, to try and solve problems um, uh, around us. I've been in this position. 2013. It was. It wasn't. Um, you know, thanks to my father, I had lots of advice, lots of help from him. Still, it was very difficult to be dealing with all those issues. I became emir just uh, three or four days before what happened in Egypt, the 30th of uh, of June, and um, I had to deal with the situation, not me only, but I was one of the countries, one of the leaders that had to deal with the situation to try to find solution in Egypt. It was very difficult. Uh, unfortunately, you know, I tried my best. I was successful. There are reasons for that. But, you know, I was supposed to have a, have a speech and talk to you on a speech, but I decided, you know, I'll just let it go easy like that. It's much easier for me, and I think it's easier for you to, uh, if you have any questions. I don't want to take much of your time talking, boring you with what, what I did. You know, I know that some of you have uh, questions uh, to, to ask me, but let us, since we are in a university, in a very important university, I think if we can concentrate on the importance and the role of the youth in, this, in, in our region, and uh, it will be very, very important because they were the youth that played the most important role in, uh, in the Arab Spring. And believe me, some of them, many of them, I was surprised when I met them after the revolution from different parts of the countries that stood up against uh, dictatorship. They are very intelligent, they are um, very clever, and uh, they have a, a great vision for the future. So we should try to talk about this and to how to, we can help them in, in, in the future. So I'm... I don't know if I should say anything, but I will be wait, expecting uh, questions from you. So thank you very much, Mr. Uh, President. And I'm say it again, I'm very honored to be sitting in front of you here. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you so much. So I, I, we have been able to pull some questions from the audience. We we get started, first, your visit, your first visit, your first visit, your first visit, your بصفتك أميرا أخبرنا عن اجتماعك مع الرئيس أوباما وكيف جرى الحوار كيف ترى أهمية العلاقة التي تربط بلدك بالولايات المتحدة It was a nice meeting. He was uh, very easy going, and uh, which uh, it's a personality that uh, I like and I get along very very quickly. I think it was a very good meeting uh, with all the officials here in, the, in DC. It's a very important. Uh, visit for me, first visit for me as as in uh, in, this, in my position. We have a strategic relation with with America. Uh, people uh, talk a lot about military security, but there's something very important that you know we should talk about and we should also promote more is the educational uh, relationship we have with with America. We have. 
course, uh, Georgetown and five other great uh, American universities in, in Doha with other institutes as well. But overall, the meetings went very well. We had a lot to discuss. Um, honestly speaking, we were discussing mainly about the region problem because you know, the region is, in, the region is in turbulence with all the terrorist um, movements and um, dictatorship and some uh, war and, and, and the war in Syria and uh, Iraq and what the situation in Yemen as well. We were discussing mainly about those, uh, those countries. We spoke briefly about how important the relation is between both countries. But overall, I think the, uh, the meeting went, uh, the meeting went uh, very well. So President Obama is not the first head of state you've been with uh, in recent days. Shortly before your visit here to the United States, you were in Saudi Arabia. Can you give us a sense of how that meeting and how you were in the nature of the relationship between the two countries? It's a very important meeting and it's a very important meeting. It's a very important meeting and it's a very important meeting. It's a very important meeting and it's a very important meeting. For us as a small country in the Gulf, Saudi Arabia is the most important country to have a relation with. We had a historic relationship with Saudi Arabia, very strong relationship with Saudi Arabia, and it is still strong and it will always be strong. And I will make sure that the relation stays strong with Saudi Arabia. We all know that there's a big pressure on Saudi Arabia with what's going on around the region, that Saudi Arabia should, uh, is a big country and uh, they can handle this pressure and it's their role to try to solve uh, problems around, around the region. And I'm confident that King Salman and um, the people aiding him as well, especially the second generation aiding him. I'm confident that they will do a good job and uh, they'll do, th at least I know that they'll do their best, but it's up to us as well to help them, for them to, um, to stabilize uh, the, the region. They have a big task ahead of them. It's not gonna be easy and it's not easy to be successful with what's going on, but the meeting went very well and I'm confident that uh, King Salman Will, uh, uh, will help to stabilize the region, but it's gonna be very difficult. First of all, we start, we start off what we did internally, the reforms that we did internally. We concentrated a lot on education. We believe that education is, um, is a thing that we should invest in. So that is why we invited six of the best uh, American universities in, uh, in Doha. And also we did lots of reforms in our education system in Qatar. We have a great Qatar University. We improved it a lot. It's been always strong, but we did, you know, we had to uh, improve a lot in it. We had to do, uh, we did a lot of reforms in, uh, in our country. If you go back 15 years ago, we first started with, um, with the election, the municipality election. It was a big thing in our country, and it went well, it's still going. Uh, we have also other um, uh, things to be done as well. One of them is um, the elected uh, Majlis al-Shura, which is a parliament, and it's, hopefully it's gonna be um, uh, very soon. There are just some legal issues and logistic issues to be dealt with but we are committed to do what's better for our country. My father did a lot for the country. Of course, I'm not my father. Even if I try to be like my father, I cannot be like my father. I, uh, um, uh, I should take all the advantages that my father did and uh, try to, to add in them as well. And uh, as I said, everybody's different. But um, my father did a great job for his country and for the region, and we should, I, I am very proud of, and our country is very proud of. For well, the short term that we should address is the security. Security is very important. We have economical challenges, we have many challenges, but I think the security due to what's going on around the, our region. We say we're stable, yes, we are a stable country, but what happens in Yemen and in Egypt and Syria and Iraq, it affects us way or another. And the, more, the longer it takes, the, the more effect that we're gonna be affected by. There is something very interesting that we should, um, that we are um, working on very, very hard, and we know that it's going to be a great challenge, is depending on the oil for our income. It, this, is, this has been a challenge. If we go back just uh, 100 years ago, more or less 100 years ago, our country and the country around us were depending on selling the pearl. But after the pearl uh, planting uh, came, farming, sorry, came and uh, our uh, Japanese friend uh, f f found uh, this new system, we were broke. 
So we were in trouble. Now, when the oil came, we started breathing again. We are, in the 70s, we faced a, good, a big drop of oil prices. We were only depending on oil. The same thing happened in the 80s and the 90s, in, um, and now as well, the drop of the oil prices. Yes, yes, we are a rich country, but we have to see what we did to be in this level. In, in the mid-90s, when my father first took over, the oil price was so low, was, how much was it? Eight dollars. And, you know, we were in trouble finding money to pay salaries. People don't uh, think that, you know, we are, you know, a rich country. No, we had, we had our diffi difficult moments. But the way how to challenge them now is how to have other resources than, than, uh, than, than the oil price. We know that one day that no, we will not be depending on oil and gas. When? I hope it's going to be long, but I don't know when uh, it's going to be. But we have to be depending on um, other, uh, other things. And one of the main things that we're doing is we're investing. We're having a lot of investment. And to make sure that things go all right, as I said, the main investment we did was in education. And this is the, 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 the challenge. And these are the youth that in the future will be running the country and will make sure that our uh, economy stays uh, stable. When I spoke with the, with, the, with the officials here, we have to identify and see the real cause of those terrorist movement. When the Syrian people stood up against Bashar al-Assad, asking for freedom, dignity, you can go back and you can check. There weren't, all of them were youth asking for dignity and freedom, and there wasn't any terrorist movement. We said that from day one. If Bashar al-Assad doesn't find a solution in solving this problem, we will be facing terrorist movement because the way how he was treating his people, killing his people, young people, if we don't find a solution, we will be dealing with, we will find terrorist groups that nobody can control. Now, it's important for people to understand how this thing started in, in, um, in Syria. They were asking for freedom, dignity. 15 kids or 12 kids in the age of 12, 13, 14 just rode on the, um, on the wall leave Bashar al-Assad, you have to leave. They were put in jail. Some of them, their nails were, were taken, taken off. And those are you, young boys and girls, bo boys. Now, if you're, gonna, if you're gonna see your child being treated like that, just because he did something small on the wall, and you uh, forgive the regime, but you asked just to, your, for your child to come back. And then after that few days, the regime start killing his own people. What do we all expect this atmosphere? What will this atmosphere create? It will create terrorist movement that we are facing now. Now, my, what I always say, and I also that, so told that to the president, yes, it's important that we have to face terrorist movement. It's a threat to us and to all of us, to, to everybody. But we have to see what caused all this. And we have to make sure that if we're gonna fight these groups, that these groups don't come back again. Because if you fight them and we leave the main reason, they'll come back again in the near future. So it is difficult, but we have to face two things. There is the regime that's killing his own people, and there is uh, those terrorist groups. Unfortunately now, in, in Syria, there is terrorist groups and there's regime. People tend to forget those millions in the middle that demanded for their freedom who are the important people, who, are, who we should all support for in, in the future of Syria. This is how I see things in uh, Syria. And do you have a sense today that the collective will be able to do that? But I'll be honest with you, we shouldn't only be depending on America. Us, Arab countries, we should do our own work. And then we should ask the Americans if we need help to help us solve our problems. The problem that we've been saying, we've been always blaming the Americans. Yes, Americans, they have their mistakes. I, I have my, my point of view, some different point of view. But we have to depend on ourselves as well, as Arab countries. We have the capability to be solid together, to be facing those terrorist movements, and also to be helping uh, those uh, population for their f freedom. And then we can ask the help of America 
for uh, to help us in, in, in this. But uh, there is a sense, yes, uh, uh, what, Amer what, what I've been hearing from the officials here, that the regime in Syria lost legitimacy. They know that. And they are worried about, about uh, terrorist uh, movements. But we all forget that there are millions of people in the middle that are the people that we have to bet on and to, uh, to help. There's been lots of talks about the World Cup, about the World Cup happening in, in Qatar. Even former World Cups, why did it go to this country, didn't go to the other country? You know how important uh, soccer is and sports is. Uh, we are very proud that we're going to be hosting the World Cup in 2022. I think the main reason that we were successful in hosting this World Cup is because, we, and we believe in that, is that this World Cup is for all the Arabs, not for Qatar. If it was for Qatar, it will not be successful. We said that this whole World Cup is for all the Arabs, and that's why we're successful. It's a big challenge. And uh, those allegations, as I said, you know, I'm not going to just go and uh, any person says anything about Qatar, I'm going to answer. There's a FIFA, and they did, they had uh, people investigating and everything. They investigated they, with everybody, all the officials that we have in Qatar, and they found out that there was nothing about uh, Qatar. Now, it's bad to say that the race was between Qatar and America to host the World Cup 2022. And I know that you guys, people here, were very upset that how come this small country can beat this great country. But I think you should be, you're all sports, if you should believe that, you know, you can lose sometimes. And uh, <laughs> you shouldn't stand. That's no, it. And there's something, I don't know if it's uh, polite to say or something. After winning the World Cup, when I was waiting to host, uh, to, um, to, uh, to welcome the delegation, I was at the airport. So one guy came to me and asked me, he said, President Obama said that the World Cup shouldn't go to Qatar, it should go to America. I don't know if he said it or not. Uh, that, my answer was, uh, what, what was my answer? Yeah, God forgive him for saying that. <laughs> that was my answer. But I think, you know, this World Cup is very important for our nation and you guys should support it because you don't know how, how important that this World Cup brought all the Arabs together. I, if you see children from Libya, from Egypt, from all around the Arab world crying because we won the World Cup. And the same thing as a Qatari will do if any other nation will win the World Cup. So it's very important for us. Uh, we had different views on Egypt. We all agree that Egypt is an important country. Egypt should be stable, and it's not up to me or up to the Americans or up to the GCC who chooses who runs Egypt. The people of Egypt are, the, are responsible of choosing their, their president. Now, there is a government there. We have differences with them, but we all agree that we, this government has to be stable. Now, instead of asking help from outside, I always say that this government should help itself before then we, should, we, can, we can help the Egyptians. But my um, policy is to make sure if there's anything that I can help to uh, stabilize situation in Egypt, I will do so. We had differences between Qatar and some uh, GCC um, uh, countries concerning our approach to Egypt. We don't interfere in Egypt. We never interfered in Egypt. But what we did is when uh, a government was elected, we stood by the government. And uh, what happened in 30 of June, we, we believe it was wrong and it could have done in another way. They could have done another election, but the way how it happened was wrong. Now, this is the past. Now, we should look at the future now. What will this government do? At the end, we are there. If there's any help that we can do, we will be happy to help. And no, it's our duty to help, actually. First of all, you know, anything that will support Arab language, I'm always first one to be supportive, so uh, we will always be um, happy to support this uh, great language. What do I want people to, how to learn about my, my, my culture? Well, my culture is among the culture of the Arab Peninsula. It's a great culture, and uh, by learning the language, you will understand the culture uh, more. Talking about Arabic, uh, Mr. President, something very important that I personally worked on with um, with the um, with, um, with, the, with, with my staff in, in, in Doha, we had some um, classes in schools and universities that were taught in English. And I said that we have a great language, and it's a very important language. There are good examples around the world that they teach everything in their language. So why don't we do it in Arabic? 
there was a big debate, but we're successful now. All the language, all the um, uh, uh, classes are taught in, uh, in, in, in Arabic. So this is how I look into my, uh, my, my Arabic language. It's very important. And uh, we hope if there's anything that we can add and help to, uh, to, for people, American people, to learn this language, I'll be happy, we'll be happy to do so. Thank you. Thank you.